Yes, here we go. We're officially back. After 15 long years off the air, we're going to bring you a new Jazz Mountain set tonight. Can you believe it? It's been a long time since we were at Bucknell University in the basement of Roberts Hall on Wednesdays from 8 to 11. That was our time slot. I used to invite some friends down and we drink some wine and banter and mess around and hang out and play some jams. And it was a total blast. I can't believe it's taken me this long to bring this back, but you know, it kind of occurred to me, like, why not? And with the internet and YouTube, we can make it happen for you again. So make sure to click the subscribe button so you can get all the new episodes that come out. So here's the idea, right? Jazz Mountain is a journey and we don't know what's gonna happen any more than you do. So it's two sets, kind of like any jam band show, and we play one song and then that song leads into the next song. So we have no set list, no plan. We just kind of flow and vibe and see what happens. Uh, the story goes like this. So last, last time I had a show was 15 years ago and we actually got cut off on our very last song. And that never like sat well with me. You know, I was kind of like, wow, what, what did I do? I, I messed up and ran out of time, I guess. And so I thought like tonight, like what the hell? Like why don't we just play that last song that didn't get to get finished and we'll start back up right where we left off with an awesome tune. It happens to be one of my favorite songs of all time. It's off the Grateful Dead's debut album. And let's get it going, baby. First track of the new Jazz Mountain series. Here it comes. Hope you enjoy. Officially rolling. It feels great to get that first one in. Thanks to Jerry and the boys for that awesome tune. And for some reason, they never played that one live, really, which is interesting to me because I love that song so much. But uh, actually, at the Fairly Well shows in 2015, where Trey was Jerry and they, you know, had their last shows ever at Soldier Field in Chicago, I remember uh, we went to visit my buddy Brett at Set Break. He had really good seats on the side, and we were like way in Bumblefuck. And uh, the lights go down, and we're like, oh, shit, we got to go, go back to our seats. And then I turned to Brett, and I was like, where's Nick? Who's my friend who came with me? And he looks at the floor and points, and he goes, Nick's down there. And I'm like, oh, shit. So Nick, for whatever reason, or because he's awesome, had decided just to jump off the railing. And it was, guys, it was literally like 10 feet to even like 15 feet down. It was a really big jump. And so I'm going, like, hands on my head, like, oh, my God, like, what do I do? And they started playing, I think it was Bird Song, but then it went into this. And I was like, oh my God. So at that point, I just, just went for it and jumped down. 
I think I did a little like barrel roll kind of thing. Thought I was going to break my legs, but I survived. And then we raged the rest of the show from the floor. It was awesome. It was so cool. And that night, it was the 4th of July, so they had tons of fireworks and played U.S. Blues. It was unreal. But uh, that made me think of this next song for whatever reason. Once again, it's kind of random. And I promise not to play too many 26-minute jams on this show, but I love jams. So we're going to rock this one. It's uh, Miles Davis off the classic album, a tribute to Jack Johnson. Here we go.
Santana. Boy, that song is awesome. I actually discovered that pretty recently. I got the album at Braxis on vinyl and I never heard that one. You know, there's other popular songs on that album and the whole thing is great. But like that one just struck me as being amazing. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great tune, a great jam. And uh, that led me into thinking about a little Derek and the Dominoes off live at the Fillmore. This song rules. Check it out. Yeah. 
That man could play guitar. Wow. Eric Clapton with Derek and the Dominoes from 1970. The song's called Gotta Get Better in a Little While. Love that tune. Always have. And I feel like it's kind of like a interesting like jam for that era. It just kind of flows and feels almost like a jam band, even though it was all the way back in 1970. And I love the guitar work. I love the fact that it always makes me think they're going to end, but then they keep going. It rages. It's it's great. And uh, actually, Eric Clapton was in town a couple of months ago in St. Louis, and I totally missed it. I went to see a Jimmy Buffett show because he had just passed by my favorite guys here in town, Sean Cannon and the Voodoo Players. Shout out to you guys as always. But uh, I, apparently, like I, you know, even though they're awesome, and that was a fun night at the Boathouse in Forest Park. Apparently, Eric Clapton like absolutely fucking raged. I saw a couple of videos from my friend, and I was like, "Oh my god! Like, how did I not go?" But I, I didn't even hear about it. I like just completely missed it. Maybe I need, need to get on that app, Bands in Town or whatever, so I don't miss shows like that. Uh, anyway, we're gonna change gears and get a little bit weird here. This is some Frank Zappa, who is weird, off the album Waka Jawaka, which some people consider to be like the B-side of sorts to the classic Hot Rats. Here we go.
Frank Zappa, Frank Zappa. You know, I, I always thought that Frank Zappa was probably on a bunch of drugs because he's so weird and awesome and just unique. But actually, all he ever did was smoke cigarettes and drink coffee. So a lot of people's normal morning routine is all Frank Zappa ever did. But more power to him for being that awesome and uh, innovative just by, you know, only doing that and not having to use drugs. It's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, real quick story about that. Uh, that song, Big Swifty, actually appears in a video made by my sister and I in college. So we had this party at my sister's house, and a few of my friends were there, including Pat and Sam, if you're listening. And uh, she was lamenting about the fact that she had this video project due on Monday, and she had done nothing for it. But what she told us was that like, there's, there's no guidelines. Her teacher said, make any video and turn it in. It has to be like 15 minutes or something. It had to be like a long video. And we're going like, all right, maybe we can help you out. It might be kind of fun. And I'm looking around the room and I spot the elf on the shelf I had gotten her the year before for Christmas. This really creepy little elf thing. And I was like, bingo, let's make a video about this creep. And uh, so long story short, we made, we made this video about this elf named Fritzy. And he went through all sorts of trials and tribulations with like drugs and losing money and women and gambling and all this stuff. But then like... We attached him to the ceiling fan at one point by this ribbon and he was spinning around and around and this was before like video editing days but somehow we like were able to like replay that over and over again so it was like this really trippy kind of thing where he was spinning 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 and that song was out in the background and uh we were maybe smoking joints maybe not that's up to you to decide and uh that was on camera and we turned it in or she turned it in and she was like, oh, it's a disaster. My teacher is going to know we're smoking drugs. And like, we were just a mess. And actually, the teacher gave her an A and said it was fantastic. So, booyah. And thanks to Frank Zappa for helping us out with that. All right. So, we've come to the end of the first set here at Jazz Mountain. We got one more for you. And I figured, hey, why not? We started with the Grateful Dead. Let's make it a Grateful Dead sandwich and close it down too. Pat, the guy at that party... Uh, when we made the video, he showed me this track, actually. It's a classic Grateful Dead song, but this version is particularly awesome. Jerry just has like an extra eighth or something. Uh, and I'll never forget Patrick being down on two knees, raging, just screaming like, this solo is the best. And he is right. Jerry rules. So let's go. And uh, we'll sign off after this tune, guys. Stay tuned for the next set of some great music. We'll continue the journey after a little more Grateful Dead. Peace.
Thank you.